Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Catanzariti. I'm a web developer from Sydney. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can read in image data using Canvas and JavaScript. We'll be going over three ways to do this. Hard coding in the location of the image we wanna import in, using the file upload field, and finally, the much nicer method of dragging and dropping into the browser window. We'll start with a blank Canvas tag like so. That border there is placed by CSS, just to make it clear where our canvas tag is for the example. Our HTML looks like so. It's a very bare HTML page focused mostly on this canvas element and the JavaScript used to bring that canvas element to life. Our canvas element has an ID so we can refer to it in our JavaScript and a class that we'll use to refer to it in our styles. I've got the initial function that starts everything going currently commented out. so. It's not gonna run yet, just so we can see how the canvas element starts before any intervention by a JavaScript. When we uncomment and allow that function to do its thing, we get our wonderfully cute cat peeking out of its box. If there was ever anything the internet needed more of, it's cats. Okay, so what's happening? We start with two variables, our canvas variable and our context variable. The canvas variable looks for the element with the ID of our canvas, and the context variable sets a context for our canvas element to be the 2D context. 2D is all we need here as we're not using anything fancy with WebGL, we're just loading image data. Next, we've got an event listener that listens for the DOM content loaded event for the window. This runs a defined function once all our DOM elements are ready. The function we wanna run is listed in the second argument here. Keep in mind, this function works only on modern browsers, so Internet Explorer 9 and above, and Chrome, Firefox, so forth. You can do something similar with jQuery's document.ready function. I was just thinking to keep jQuery completely out of the absolute bare bones examples. Do this however you'd like really, as long as this bit of code runs when the page is ready and there's elements on the page. Our init image loader function is very simple so far. We run a function called load file that defines which file we want to load. We pass in the location of our cat image in here. I include the window.location.href as I found a relative file path can have some quirks in different browsers, so it's best to specify exactly where that image is. I also remove any trailing slash at the end of the URL as some browsers keep that in. Others take it out, some servers will force it upon people who visit, others don't. So to make things simple, I prefer to force consistency on everybody, take out the slash if it's there, and then add it into the string manually. Further down, we've got that load file function. So let's look inside and see what we're doing with that image file location that we've worked so hard to get right. It starts with the temp image store variable in which we store a new image object. So far, this isn't actually a visible image. It's just an image object in JavaScript, which has all of the attributes and methods associated with image, but doesn't actually have an image yet inside it. It's basically a blank slate that's waiting to be filled. One of the functions we can now use as part of this image object is the onload function. Once our temp image store image actually has an image inside it and that image loads, then this function will run. We've got our EV variable, which JavaScript returns that provides us with all the info on the loaded image. In particular, ev.target is what we're looking for. Um, this is also an image object in JavaScript, just like temp image store that we created, uh, but this one contains the loaded image itself. Exactly what we want. With ev.target, we use the image data to update our canvas. Firstly, we set the canvas height and width to match that image. And then we use the 2D contexts draw image function to draw that image to position 00, zero on our canvas, basically filling the canvas with that image. All of that's great, but the bit that makes our unload, fun unload function actually run is the line outside of this function here. This bit is where we set the source attribute for our blank image to be the file path we defined in our load file function. Once that is set, the browser downloads, and once it's downloaded, 
it runs the onload function, which updates our canvas. Once all of that runs, you'll get the cute cat just like this. We can extend this idea to work with the basic file upload field in HTML forms. It looks like so in the browser. Keep in mind, it does sometimes appear differently on different browsers. The HTML for this is input type equals file, ID equals uploaded file. The file uploading process in the browser looks like this. They'll come to the browser, click choose file, find the file on their hard drive, and bam, the file is uploaded. Our JavaScript kicks in and puts it into the canvas tag here. In our JavaScript, quite a bit has changed. We've got a new variable called uploaded file, which is assigned to our new HTML form element we gave the ID of uploaded file to. We've updated our init image loader function to include a new event listener that is attached to our uploaded file element. This event listener listens for the change event, which fires whenever the content in the form input changes. In our case, whenever a user selects a new file. When they select a file, it fires off the handle manual uploaded files function. The handle manual uploaded files function, and by all means, feel free to call it something shorter, reads the input from that element. Our EB target variable that we have returned will have an array called files containing all of the files selected by the user. We only want one file at a time, so we're going to keep things simple by only ever selecting the very first file found here. We pass that file object into a handle file function, which is where we'll actually use that file. In that handle file function, we start by defining a regular expression that looks for a string that starts with image dot. We'll be looking for this as our file types come through in JavaScript as image.jpg, image.png, and so forth. So as an example, here's a screen capture I took earlier with a breakpoint just as handle file was about to run. We can see the file type I uploaded was image.jpg. So that's how JavaScript stores them and represents them. Makes it a bit easier to just quickly read through it. We use this regular expression to determine if a file that has been uploaded is in fact an image or not. If it looks like an image, then our match function here will return true and we'll run through this code. There are very likely more advanced and more thorough, more secure ways of checking that a file is genuinely an image. However, for this tutorial, I'm gonna to stick to a very quick check like this one. If you wanna get a little more in depth with it, by all means, go ahead, look into new and more thorough ways. But for a quick example, we're gonna stick with the basics. If we do have an image, then we use the file reader JavaScript object to read in the image that the user has uploaded. This file reader object uh, is just an object which lets web apps read the contents of files on a user's computer. We'll assign one to the reader variable so we can use it. The pattern here is actually very similar to our earlier on load example. We're using the same code as when we loaded the image before. This time though, we're surrounding it with a reader.onloadEnd function that will run once the image file has loaded. To load the image file into our JavaScript so it can be used, we use the read as data URL function that we attach onto the reader variable. Once it has finished loading our file, then the onloadEnd function is called, which creates a temporary image object, putting it into the canvas, just like our previous example. When all this works as expected, the user clicks onto choose file, finds their cat picture, and sees the uploaded cat picture as expected. Uploading files by making someone click a button and hunt through their file system is a bit old school. People expect to be able to drag and drop between windows these days. Let's just give them that option. It'll look something like this. Our markup will once again be very similar with two differences. The first difference is this div here, which has our text of drag and drop your image here. Uh, it's got an ID of drop area for our JavaScript and a class name of drop area for our styles. The second difference is I've thrown jQuery in to allow for simple adding and removing of class names for a basic hover effect. 
Our JavaScript is extremely similar to the form upload example. We start out with the same variables and our load event listener is exactly the same. However, our init image loader has changed to include all of our drag and drop functionality. We add three new event listeners, one for when someone drags over the drop area element, one for when they drag away from that element, and one for when they drop something onto that element. In each case, we're just adding and removing a class so we can visually show the user that they're dragging it into the right spot. If we go to the example and we drag a file over into that spot, as you can see, that's what it looks like. We drag it over, it gets the drag over class and turns green. If we drag it away, it loses that class and goes back to normal. We also add a new event listener for the drag over event to the window itself. We just tell the browser not to try to do any of its default behaviors while we're hovering our file over the element. The bit which does the important stuff is next. We add an event listener for the drop element on the window. If someone drops a file onto the window, we read in the data found. Within JavaScript, it then sees this data in the data transfer object. That will contain all the info about our dragged in file. We then use prevent default to prevent the browser's default functionality of replacing the page we're viewing with our file loaded in that window. Basically, if you drag in a file into a browser window, by default, the browser wants to load that file in that window. We don't want that. Definitely don't want that to happen when we drag the file in. So make sure you've got prevent default in there to stop that. Just like our upload form, we only pass a single file object to our handle file function. From that point, the code is exactly the same as the previous example. We've just pulled in the file information from their file system using a different method. Because they're both so similar, it's very simple and very common to implement both the form upload and the drag and drop functionality to cater for users who prefer clicking to upload and for users who prefer drag and drop. Make everybody happy. Our drag and drop code in action looks like so. Our happily dragged and dropped cat remains safely duplicated within our canvas element when we drop it in. As you might've noticed, we've got the dragging and dropping happening on the window element and not on the actual drag and drop area that we defined. I do this just because if somebody slightly misses the element or they don't fully understand, there's no harm in just letting them drag it into any spot on the window for it to work. So I like to just make it idiot proof, basically. They drag it into the window, it'll upload. And that, my friends, is how you can read it image data using the canvas tag and JavaScript. If you've liked this and you'd really like to take it further, that was just a sample of my course on manipulating and using images and video using HTML5 and JavaScript on Learnable. So definitely head over to Learnable and you can find out a whole heap of other stuff that you can do using HTML5, Canvas, and JavaScript. See you there. Thanks for watching.